Hey kitties, it's Triple Feature Tuesday once again, and this week we're looking at great premise, no payoff movies. Is this That's right, October continues, and so do the horror movies. So I thought we would look at a few horror movies that I like, but they don't really have satisfying conclusions. Which is not to say, like, uh, you know, th this includes any sort of movie with, a bat with a, like, a poor ending. It's just, like, you get the sense that, like, the screenwriter and director, the people that made the movie, they had this great idea. It's new. It's different. Let's give it a try. And then they get about halfway through the movie, and then they realize, we don't know where to take this idea. We don't know how to stick this landing and as a result about halfway through these movies it just starts sort of waffling and we kind of end up at a conclusion rather than arriving at a conclusion so we're gonna go in order of uh, decreasing success of the uh, premise and uh, as such we will be looking at teeth American Mary and the human centipede parentheses first sequence teeth is you know, it, what I, I think what really grabbed the horror movie world about Teeth was how had we not done this before? Considering who our audience is, considering who our audience is, is obsessed with, this seems like this should have been like uh, just decades prior, back in the gross old 70s days. Teeth stars Jess Wexler, or Wexler, as uh, Dawn a uh, pro-abstinence high schooler who soon discovers that she has vagina dentata, a.k.a. teeth in her vagina. It's great. <laughs> um, it's actually, the, the, this movie has so much going for it, not the least of which is Jess Weixler, because like the whole movie, she's in just about every scene, and she carries the movie very well. I think this was like the second or third uh, movie that she had done and she is incredible as you watch the journey of this character who is very uh, uh, well, clearly anti uh, premarital sex uh, but a high schooler she gets tempted and uh, she gives in to her temptations only to find that uh, every man in the world is a scumbag see this is part of the uh, part of what may what uh, gets this movie closer to sick like completely successful as compared to the other two is it commits to its message early on and doesn't stray from it too much to wit we have a main character who uh has a weird biological aspect about her instead of making her a monster she is constantly surrounded by terrible men the first boy that she almost wants to hook up with ends up uh, trying to rape her and in as a defense mechanism which man I cannot blame anybody for wanting to evolve a defense mechanism like that considering how terrible men are uh, she just chops his thing off and leaves him to die you know in a moderate fugue state because yeah, yeah. I would be confused too if that sort of happened because um as it turns out, or as the movie progresses, progresses, we learn that she has more control over the teeth than uh, is initially thought. And uh, if, you know, the activities are, are nice and consensual, hey, teeth don't come out. The minute you try to force yourself on her or treat her like shit, hey, guess what? Teeth. So, the, uh, gynecolo so when uh, she goes to the gynecologist, played by Josh... Pace, or Pais, I've never actually known how you pronounce his name, but I've always fought, loved when this guy pops up and things, because he is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. He is actually, the he played Raphael in the original Ninja Turtles movie, and uh, I think at least one other one, and he has the distinction of being both the man in the suit and also the voice. I think the only thing he doesn't do is, uh, I don't think he manned the animatronic puppet head, but uh, he pops up in a lot of weird New york -y things, which is always a good time. And he plays our scumbag gynecologist who uh, immediately clocks that Don has never been to a gynecologist and, you know, tries to mess around with her. A 
la that uh, terrible, terrible uh, gymnast doctor that is, you know, in prison forever until he dies. And uh, so, guess what? Teeth. And then, you know, but then she has a nice consensual interaction with this other boy and it's fine. But the minute he starts giving her shit and like acting like she's like this big trophy and she didn't care about her teeth at this point, it kind of waffles a little bit, which is to say the script could have been just a little bit tighter uh, as we get to the end of the film where uh, Dawn decides to uh, fully actualize and use her uh, gifts uh, to the maximum extent, which is to say to get revenge on her stepbrother for letting her mo her uh, mother die in horrible agony while he was, you know, off having sex with his girlfriend. You can guess what she does to him. But it uh, the, the movie does end with a good bit at the end where like of course she has to run away from everything at the end of this she hitches a ride with a guy and uh, the guy seems nice at first but then he parks the car and won't let her out of the car and he says like he you know basically says i'm we're gonna have sex one way or the other and it's a really great moment where uh Je Don jess weixler as don just looks right into the camera and says yeah yeah this is gonna happen this is my life now and so we get kind of like, um, even though it could very easily go in like, I spit on your grave, woman revenge movie directions, it doesn't, which is both a strength in terms of recognizing how much movies and uh, women in horror movies have evolved at this point. But at the same time, you can sort of tell that there were a few moments where they weren't exactly sure what to fill the movie with as a result. But it is very consistent in Dawn being the, go the good guy throughout the whole movie. The men just at minimum failing her, if not actually just being terrible and going after her and trying to hurt her and, you know, getting what they deserve. It's kind of fun. From a male perspective, it just seems like such a juvenile premise. It's just like, no, 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 no. You know, I've heard stories. There are some women, and in there, you, you don't know, and it's the stupidest thing in the world. But the movie is surprisingly good. I, I, I would definitely recommend Teeth out of uh, all three of the movies uh, today. Next up, we have American Mary by the Soska sisters, uh, Jen and Sylvia, starring uh, my just one of my absolute favorites, uh, Catherine Isabel. Any excuse for Catherine Isabel. Mary, uh, this one... It kind of is thematically similar to uh, Teeth in terms of uh, focusing on a female protagonist who uh, is surrounded by terrible, terrible men. My main issue with this movie is that it never seems to want to decide what it's about. In its defense, it has a wealth of great ideas, and I can understand the lack of desire to settle on one, but at the same time, it makes the movie uh, a, not necessarily muddled, but less effective in terms of like trying to uh, tell the story of this character, Mary. Because at the beginning, she's a struggling med student and she takes a job as an exotic dancer, but then when the strip club owner realizes that she is uh, studying to be a surgeon, he calls her into the back room to work on a guy that's a part of his ganger's crew that uh, got injured. And like, that could be the direction of the movie in terms of being, you know, uh, a crime doctor type of thing. But then she continues with her, uh, with uh, her residency. But then one of the strippers who played by a uh, Tristan risk, is who has been having herself surgically modified to resemble Betty Boop. She kind of pulls Mary in to performing some uh, unlicensed uh, body modification surgery on some of her friends with, you know, uh, similar hobbies. And so it looks like that could be like the central direction of the movie. Uh, Mary as, you know, an unlicensed underground body modification surgeon. But then Mary espouses that and goes back to med like continues with her med with her residency and med school and uh, is eventually invited invited to a party with uh, some of the other professors and uh, other uh, 
higher ups at the hospital that she's interning at and they roofie her and drug her and so she drops out of med school and then hires the strip club gang to kidnap the the ringleader of the group and then starts performing body modification surgery on him and so then it feels like it could be like an i spit on your grave sort of situation where it's like she's uh going after revenge and the particular horror movie flavor of it is this extreme body modification surgery but no she just kind of keeps him as a hobby and then goes back to plot line number two where she becomes an unlicensed underground body modification surgeon and that's how the movie progresses for a little while but then for reasons that are not really uh, explained well on screen mary is not happy with her new life and don't get me wrong, there's a zillion reasons why, but it's not really expressed in the film. And then while well, she's uh, kind of under suspicion for the uh, the missing doctor that uh, she's got, you know, wrapped up in a storage unit, like the movie ends up with her being stalked and attacked by the husband of one of her patients because uh, one of her patients wanted to um, become as close to a Barbie doll as humanly possible. And so she hired Mary to sew her vagina shut. And her husband was not pleased with this. And so her husband, the the, the patient's husband, murders her and then goes after Mary. Mary ends up, like, they end up killing each other in the process. And then there's, like, a big, like, that last big moment is Mary sewing herself up and, you know, once again demonstrating that she is a highly skilled surgeon, which was never in question throughout the whole film. That's like the one thing you really know about her. <sighs> and it's just very muddled. And, you know, if we picked like one lane to go in, I think the movie would be a bit more satisfying. The movie as it is, is just stunning. It's kind of fascinating in kind of voyeuristic being exposed to a uh, different sort of world than uh, you normally would because it, a lot of the movie feels like a brochure for body modification, which this also would have been a good th focus of your movie, but it's not enough. It never turns into like one solid movie. Despite the fact that you have all sorts of fascinating things like, uh, like uh, you have the little Bo Peep, or I'm sorry, the, the Betty Boop friend, you have the aforementioned uh, Barbie surgeon. The Soska sisters themselves make a cameo as a pair of twins that want to have, want to switch their left arms so that they're even closer together. And it's very adorable and sweet. You know, it kind of like, uh, thinking about it, it kind of reminds me of the original Hellraiser movie where Clive Barker got the idea for the, uh, the look and just the overall demeanor of the Cenobites because he had been going to uh, leather S&M clubs. And while he understood that this is a fascinating visual to put on the screen, the plot and characters focus uh, or are built around that. And there's a strong, there are stronger characters and plot that utilize these things uh, to great effect. Whereas what the Soskas were trying to do with this movie feels like it got a, gets a little confused. And so even though while uh, definitely the character of Mary is very strong, and I mean, Catherine Isabel is just knocks it out of the park as she often does. Um, and the visuals are great. There, there's a lot of excellent moments of tension and suspense. It doesn't really uh, coalesce into the most satisfying film despite the fact that we have this great premise hey let's do a horror movie that features heavily it features heavily extreme body modification and build it around that it just it's definitely a great idea i don't think they i don't think they 100 percent succeeded as much as you know one would hope and finally we end on the the human centipede parentheses first sequence because if you have a triple feature with the human centipede nothing can follow it because it's a goddamn human centipede. And uh, I, I was a little bummed I couldn't figure out like a good female protagonist uh, third movie for this. But this one does fit more with Teeth and uh, American Mary than not. Because both, all three of them do feature prevalent themes of body horror. With uh, Dawn and Teeth having a 
reputation. American Mary going around and surgically altering people, which is what is happening in The Human Centipede, in which uh, uh, Dr. Joseph Heiter, played by the deceased German actor Dieter Losser, or Laser, depending on how cool you are, or how, how cool he, he was, is trying to build a human centipede, which is to say he is sewing people's butts to other people's mouths so that they all have one continuous digestive tract. It's disgusting. There's no getting around that. It is a preposterous idea. It is one of the most ridiculous things ever. And yet the first movie is not the worst thing I've ever seen, if only because I've also seen Human Centipede Parts 2 and 3. I saw Part 2 in the theater. That was revolting. The only thing worse than being turned into a human centipede by an insane medical surgeon is being turned into a human centipede by a mentally handicapped parking lot attendant. It's worse. So, Dr. Heider has kidnapped three people, two American girls, and one Japanese man. All appear to be tourists in Germany, and they crossed his path. The girls actually drove up to his house, and that was just a miracle. He, he, like, he just explains, hey, here's the diagram. This is what I'm going to do to you. Good night. When you wake up, you're going to be a human centipede, so don't try to move around too much. And then he does it. And this is the crucial failing of the film. He does it within like 20 minutes, it may, may, maybe a half hour. And then you have like another hour of this movie. And the, the human, the, the creation of the centipede should be the big thing. That is the climax of the movie. Or this should have just been a short film. But don't get me wrong. There's a lot of fun that's had afterwards as Dr. Hyder is trying to train his human centipede. And then when, God, I'd like to say the worst cops I've ever seen in a horror movie, but I mean, there's like, I, well, you saw, I did a whole triple feature about bad cops and Dan, Danny Glover and uh, Saw still, still might be the worst in an actual horror movie. But these two guys are so bumbling and you think they're going to, help rescue the people, but that doesn't work out because they're stupid. And there's like, again, there's no tension to the film because you've already been turned into the human centipede. There's no getting around that. At best, you know, you get separated and you're still horribly mutilated from the surgery for the rest of your life. I will say the ending does have one of the like worst, worst fates I've ever seen a person suffer or you know be consigned to but it, it's just not that good it's like it's it's i mean the whole movie is just some guy was drinking had the idea for this thing and made a feature-length film out of it this should have been like a little short film a tales from the crypt thing something like a half hour long and it would have been so much more effective it's not completely ineffective because he does make the thing and then you're just watching it for the whole rest of the movie Actually, you know, now that I think about it, I like this triple feature even more because it's kind of a nice transition because you get, like, the female protagonist uh, with a natural uh, body horror thing transition into female protagonist with a surgical body horror and then just completely out the window, loco bananas, body horror with scary German scientist. Or, well, yeah, surgeon, scientist. I mean, he is experimenting. Oh, God. The human centipede. But... Yeah, three horror films that have really strong premises, premises that don't know, that, that that don't pay out, pay off as well as you would hope, but in different and interesting ways. Teeth, American Mary, and The Human Centipede. Yeah, I didn't talk too much about The Human Centipede because guess what? It's all right there. It's all right there. Rent the movie, download it, stream it. It is not the worst way to spend an afternoon. Much like swimming, you're not going to want to eat like an hour before or an hour after. But there's nothing else to talk about the human centipede. Don't give me that look. I have done this job, th this this video well, considering that man, they're just sony and they're sewn it sewn together ass to mouth. I don't know what you want from me. All right, three movies, good premise, not necessarily the best movies. Teeth. American Mary, the human centipede. Dear God, I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>